Okay. So uh, again, we're going to talk about, you know, basically thermal management, a little bit about the specifications and material selection, uh, and then, you know, in in between, we will talk. We will showcase some of our uh, design tools, which I think are very useful to our customers. Uh, next slide. Okay. So how how does you know a good thermal control system increase reliability? So if you lessen temperature fluctuations, if you isolate internal sections with different operating temperature ranges, if you ensure effective and prolonged performance of the electronic devices through these techniques, you're increasing the overall reliability. And uh, aerospace PCBs have many applications um, like APU, radio communications, uh, et cetera. So it's a, it is an important uh, problem uh, to solve. And for every problem, there is a solution. So if you don't see the solution in these in this presentation today, please reach out to us and we can assist. Uh, next slide. So parameters that impact the PCB thermal management. So you definitely want good thermal conductivity. You need to choose the materials with good operating temperatures. You need to select components that satisfy the airspace manufacturing standards, and you need to uh, identify the hotspots. And then what is the kind of the solution? It's more copper um, really is a solution, but you don't want to just add more copper. It makes manufacturing difficult. So really understand how much copper you need to achieve your effective uh, heat dissipation is really critical. Uh, next slide. In terms of regulatory standards, uh, really the key thing is, in my opinion, is the IPC specifications, really understand them and make sure you're designing to, designing for success to meet those specifications. Uh, next slide. I think the next slide is okay too. I think those are reference slides for everybody. So, um, so the DFM, can you go back one slide, sorry. So in terms of DFM considerations uh, for aerospace and mil spec PCBs, it's important to know that aspect ratio becomes even more difficult with the requirements of etch back and you know, wicking and all of that. So in your requirements for aerospace and mil spec PCBs, be very cognizant of the aspect ratio. And then the annular ring is always key in every design. And then the copper weight that you want, is it possible with the spacing requirements that you would need with that copper weight? So you have to really talk to your manufacturer and see how they're gonna build it. They can start with a thicker foil, etch through that foil, and then play it up. That is, you know, what what are they going to start with? What are they going to finish at to get your heavy copper? And then that would dictate your design rules. In terms of material selections for aerospace PCBs, uh, you should have select a material that has these types of uh, properties, you know, low CTE, um, low moisture absorption, uh, low no outgassing or low outgassing, and then of course the th high thermal conductivity. So these are some things uh, that you should look out for. Uh, next slide. So instead of keeping it all in your head, we have a nice little tool that helps you select uh, materials based on the properties you're uh, looking for. And so that's what this is about.
And I think we're handing off for a demo. Oh, shit. Thank you. Um, you can see my screen. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. So this uh, this is a, a material selector tool. So uh, it has uh, material properties as given in the manufacturer data sheet. And it will help you compare to uh, more materials and also help you in selecting a proper material depending on your specific application. So for uh, uh, ease of selection, uh, we have some uh, basic um, criteria like uh, depending on the material type say if you have flex board or rigid board you can directly go to flex and run the tool and it will load the flex material by default there will be rigid material and there are no filters applied when you load the tool and so you can see at the bottom the entire material table list so then you can also have a uh, you can say if you want a halogen free material, you can say yes, and you run the tool and you get a short list of materials, which are halogen free. Same goes for very high thermal conductivity material. You can just tick mark this option. And when you say go submit all the materials, which are very high thermal conductivity that there will be listed here. So there will be no, no other uh, filters that you need to apply. So these are some of the broad classification. Also, now you can also put filters depending on different properties like electrical properties, uh, thermal properties, chemical properties, uh, mechanical properties. We have a broad classification based on the speed loss. So uh, for different frequency uh, operating frequency, we have uh, four different classification is normal speed, normal loss, medium speed, medium loss, high speed, and then very high speed application. So you can choose from this drop down and the materials which are in those categories will be displayed to you we have this small calculator here which you can enter if you know what is the maximum frequency content that you're operating say if you're operating at 10 gigahertz as a maximum frequency content uh, you can enter 10 here and it will calculate the fastest signal rise time and the highest data transfer rate so you can enter any one of these values and the other two will be automatically calculated and those values will be used as a filtering parameter. Then in detail, if you can also use these sliders to adjust the range of the um, properties, like here we have the dielectric constant or uh, dissipation factor. You can also, there's this single slider which you can use to adjust uh, the dielectric electrical strength of the material. We have a drop down for CTI class. So class zero, one, two, three. So depending on that, you can keep or by default, the values will be all for all the drop downs. You can see they all, um, they will not be, um, used in the filtering. If you are, they are left at the default values for thermal properties. We have the glass transition temperature, um, thermal decomposition temperature, the coefficient of thermal expansion in X, Y axis, as well as in Z axis. So you can use these sliders to uh, limit the uh, range of the CT that you want. So materials between eight to 23 will be displayed for this scenario. We'll keep it low. You can also select uh, the thermal conductivity that you're looking for. So can be a normal high or very high. Um, so for chemical properties, we have moisture absorption and CAF resistant. So you can use this slider to increase, decrease the range of the material that you are looking for. Also CAF resistance. You can say, if you want a CAF resistant material, just say yes, or you can keep it all uh, under mechanical properties. We have tensile modulus, tensile strength. Can, can you click CAF resistant? resistant? I want to see what it says. Okay. Okay. No, uh, it's just say yes. And when you click on, uh, go submit the materials with the CAF resistant. Uh, those will be displayed. I see. Yeah, yeah. So those are there. I think I think people get it. Let me move back to the webinar. Okay. I'm really excited for you to uh, showcase huh. the new tool. Yes. Okay. Okay. So let's spend spend more time on that. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So further. Uh, 
filters will be for family so polyamide and etc you can also filter out using a material or manufacturer say isola or uh, any other like panasonic rogers we can also filter out using the ipc slash number so ipc and slash number and when you click on go submit the whatever filters you have used the those materials which fit there will be displayed you can click on view and it will display the um, all the properties in, um, in the data sheet we also have uh, units so we can convert the units to metric also the default will be your imperial um, unit system and you can change to metric so the wherever applicable the units will be converted also you can compare you can click on this checkboxes with multiple materials and click on the compare and this will give us give you the side by side comparison of all the properties that are there so the dielectric constant the electrical strength and all the all the parameters basically um, yeah so this is this is the material selector tool yeah. and just stop sharing I can thanks. Continue. Thanks, Prana. So the idea is, you know, for whatever your end application is, um, whatever is the most important properties that you can quickly see, what are the appropriate materials, and then these materials are something that we carry in stock, and I think most fabricators would be uh, carrying that in stock. So for thermal and power distribution analysis, it provides a color scale map of temperatures at various points on the circuit board under different conditions. And thermal and power distribution analysis identifies the hotspots for understanding heat flow pattern and identifying hotspots, checking dielectric material reliability with various CTE values, efficient board layout design, how many component, uh, how many vias, component placement, et cetera. Component selection and heat sink design, selecting the heat dissipation and cooling methods, uh, et cetera. And some of the thermal analysis softwares uh, out there, there's uh, Autodesk, ANSYS, um, Cadence. And I know Altium Designer allows for export of the design files to third-party uh, PCB thermal simulation software as well. In terms of surface finishes and conformal coating, uh, so a surface finish and, and, and any type of coating, it really acts as a protective barrier um, to the environment. Uh, gold, Hassel, you know, Enig as an example are the preferred uh, surface finishes. And then the conformal coating you pick depends upon the, you know, your temperature range and uh, all the other items here, um, which are, are key. So you can pick, you can pick your different coatings based on, you know, what your requirements are. And when you have a coating requirement, it does, it should, you should include a, a drawing specifically for coating. Uh, so it's not enough to say just, uh, you know, please, conformal coat my boards, it's better to say, uh, you know, in more detail, have a have a drawing specifically for that conformal coating process. And in, the, in that drawing, you can annotate anything that's critical. And so that's a key point. It's probably another uh, webinar. Uh, next slide. Yeah. So here are the basic equations for calculating thermal resistance and effective thermal connectivity. So it, this helps in deciding the low resistance path for dissipation. Higher the resistance, tougher the heat flow of dissipation. So thicker substrate materials have lower resistance than thinner ones. Well, so these equations um, are built into the tool that you're going to see. So I'm very excited about that. So next slide. So here are some of the techniques. Uh, so it's really about, you know, spreading the heat. Uh, so in your board and layout design, uh, which we'll kind of discuss. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this is kind of the outline. Next slide. 
So heavy copper is key. Uh, so you can in incorporate wide and heavy traces. Um, you can incorporate more vias. Uh, you can incorporate thicker copper cores. And then so again, how do you calculate all of this? Uh, and then, you know, can you manufacture it? I think those are the, the key things. And then, you know, dissipating heat through heavier ground planes, I think that's key. For a manufacturing standpoint, I think we're comfortable up to four ounces and anything above that is really special. Uh, so you, you need to, you know, speak to your manufacturer if you need anything more than that. Okay, next slide. So this is a three-in-one calculator uh, of trace width, allowed temperature rise, et cetera. So we're going to get a demo for that. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so uh, this is the PCB trace width, uh, uh, current capacity, and temperature rise calculator. So the calculator is based on the IPC 2152 standard. So it's a significant improvement over uh, the previous IPC 2221 standard, which also talked about the current capacity of the trace. Uh, so here we can start with um, selecting where your trace is. So basically um, the trace can be on an external layer or it can be on the internal layer. So basically the formulas change depending on the position of the trace, or you can enter the ambient temperature so the sub default value here is 25. So you can change this, say like 30 degrees Celsius. You can see units at the end of each box. So you can change the units, say you can change it to Fahrenheit. Or there are uh, units for trace thickness. So also the current and et cetera, the units are there. So oh, let's say I have a trace thickness of two ounces, and the tool calculates, or you can use the tool to calculate the temperature rise above ambient or the trace width or the maximum current capacity. So you need to enter any of the two parameters to calculate the, the third parameter. So let's say, uh, so I have 30 degrees Celsius above ambient and my trace width is say, 20 mils. So with these two, I can calculate what, my, what is my maximum current capacity. So when you press the calculate button next to it, it gives me what is the uh, maximum current that the trace can withstand with, uh, with this uh, temperature rise. And along with uh, uh, this calculation, we also calculate the resistance of the trace at ambient temperature, the resistance at high temperature. Also, what will be the voltage drop at maximum current uh, across the trace? and what will be the power loss across the trace. So these values are at uh, trace length one, one inch. So you can change this to uh, say two inch and you can again, again do the recalculation. So these values will be changed. So let's say I have, uh, say I have a three amps of current with uh, 20 mil trace width. I can calculate what will be my temperature rise. So press the calculate button next to that field and it will calculate the temperature rise that is expected with this as a input and for this two length trace these values will be calculated the resistance and the voltage drop and power loss uh, for this geometry of uh, two ounce thickness so you can vary the input and calculate what will be the temperature rise also what um, what trace width you can have. So with this 30, I can calculate the trace width and this is the trace width that minimum trace width that I should have. So this is the three in one calculator I can use. Yeah. Mm. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And continue. Uh, sorry, I was muted. Okay, so for thermal copper pads, uh, they're 
you have to be careful. Um, so you can obviously solder and mount heat sinks onto onto it for heat transfer. Um, you know, you have to be careful about solder paste and your thermal profile um, in your manufacturing. That's key. So ask your manufacturer to create, um, uh, you know, a custom thermal profile for you and your board. Um, and I think we're going to talk about so some ICs have thermal vias that are uh, connected to the ground plane. And, uh, you know, sometimes you have to do VN pad for those as well. So we can talk about that. Next slide. So for component placement, uh, you know, some examples of, you know, being very specific about, you know, where you put your sensors. Um, you know, number one is uh, battery management systems. Number two, um, you know, any place that you need that thermoelectric uh, cooling. So it's important to classify and group components with similar thermal characteristics. Um, and again, always use space grade parts. Um, so, you know, those are some of the key points, I think, for component placement. And you can also talk to your assembly uh about component placement there's also small things like testing you know can you get to something to test it and um you know so there's mechanical constraints there's also manufacturing constraints um when in, in regards to uh a component placement uh next slide So in stack up design practices, uh, you know, using uh, thicker PCBs with increased surface area to improve the board thermal connectivity. Thick boards have large surface area to spread the generated heat quickly. Um, you know, you can also, uh, you know, choose the right materials as we showed in the material selector. Um, with class three, you have minimum dielectric requirements. So watch out for that. Uh, you always want your stack up to be symmetrical. And by symmetrical, it's not just the final stack up, but also how you're going to build it. So if you have subs and vias that go from one layer and stop at another layer, talk to your manufacturer to make sure how they're going to build it so that the your build, your the, the manufacturer is building a uniform stack up all the way through the process. Uh, we recently are working on a design, uh, very high speed high um, thermal kind of concerns and all the different vias start and stop from the top layer, which makes the manufacturing very, very difficult. Uh, so that would be an example to talk to, they should have talked to us before, um, you know, early on in the design phase. Okay, next, next slide. So thermal vias are heat conducting metallic barrels that provide a low thermal resistance path for the top copper to the bottom layer of a PCB. Um, so you want to place them below heat prone components to facilitate the heat dissipation. And that's where our new calculator comes in into play, like how, how much copper do you need, how big are the holes, things like that. It's really good, uh, really good tool for uh, designers and engineers. You don't want to Swiss cheese your ground plane, so you have to be careful about that. And so it's always a balancing act. Uh, and then if it's under components, you need the VN pad process as well. Okay, so next slide. I think there was a uh, misnomer, which is kind of over now, that uh, like silver conductive paste is more uh, thermally conductive than just adding more copper, but I think now I see less of that and if people understand that, you know, it's the amount of copper that's the most important thing. Okay, uh, next slide. I think we're ready to demo the tool. 
let's just bring it up. Yeah. Uh, so this is a new uh, via thermal resistance calculator tool. So um, see, vias are crucial for transferring heat from the top side to the other side of the PCB for a better heat dissipation. And this tool uh, calculates uh, thermal resistance of a single VIA and also thermal resistance of uh, the entire, um, all the VIAs together. So calculate single VIA and for the total number of VIAs given uh, for the selected pattern. So we have two different types of uh, VIA pattern um, in this tool. So one is the one which you see, and there is this VIA pattern too. So depending on the uh, style of VIA placement, you can choose VIA pattern one or VIA pattern two. So you need to enter uh, parameters like the uh, length and width of the thermal pad. So let's say I have a 0.4 inch and 0.4 inch via the thermal pad. Uh, this is the thermal conductivity of copper. I need to end. So there'll be a filler material for the via pad, so the via. So you need to give the thermal conductivity of that filler material. So it can be a conductive filler material or it's a non-conductive filler material. So let's say it's 0 0.02. We have a table actually, which gives you a uh, commonly used uh, conductive via fill and non-conductive via fill with with their thermal conductivity, the glass transition temperature and CT, etc. So you can refer to this table and you can enter the uh, appropriate parameter uh, value for the thermal conductivity. I need to enter the via height. So let's say uh, it's a O62. Uh, plating this is the via plating let's say i have a uh, one ounce plating so which is 1.4 mils so this is in inches uh say i have a drill diameter let's say I have a 15 mil drill diameter so here you can enter any of the two parameters and you can calculate the third parameter so you can enter the drill diameter and we are to we are spacing let's say i have 0.1 inch spacing between the two vrs this is my drill diameter and i can calculate how many number of vrs that can be there for uh, for this kind of geometry so when you click on the calculate button it will calculate the total number of vrs that are possible and it calculates what is the thermal resistance of a single vr with this geometry and what is the thermal resistance of the total VRs with, uh, uh, with the, the 12 uh, VRs together, how much is the total thermal resistance will be there. Also say if I choose to change this to say 16 VRs, I can calculate how much spacing I'll need. So I can just cal press the calculate button and we'll calculate the spacing, which is to be there between the VRs. 16 vias to occupy the space of this thermal pad. And again, these values are recalculated depending on the new parameters, the resistance and the total resistance also changes. So same way you can calculate what should be the drill diameter. So with the via to via spacing and the total number of thermal vias that you're going to have, uh, you can change, you can calculate the drill diameter. So now the drill diameter is calculated as 20 mils and again, the well, the, the thermal resistance of uh, VR and total um, resistance of the 16 VRs all together has uh, this changed. So we consider uh, what is the diameter of the VR which is used and what kind of uh, VR field that is there in the, uh, in the VR and all those things are take, uh, considered while calculating the uh, thermal resistance. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, this is the. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Pranav. That was great. Uh, I hope people enjoyed that tool, the new tool for the designers. Um, and if you have any suggestions, 
Uh, we are very open to that. You can uh, chat your uh, questions or suggestions in the Q&A. So again, uh, going back to assembly for a second, um, you know, we definitely want to avoid uh, the solder working into the holes. Um, you know, solder thickness of device joints should be even to reduce heat accumulation on the component leads as well. And so we have to take special care while soldering near these vias to avoid hole, the, the solder flowing into the hole. You can always decrease the diameter of the via, uh, but still have a lot of copper. And then you can also fill the via with the, the paste that we're talking about. It's more cost, um, but it's uh, you completely fill the via with no air pockets, um, which is important um, for aerospace applications. OK, next slide. So these are some of the uh, solutions you can have. So heat sinks works on the principles of conduction, convection, radiation. Um, so that's one, I'm gonna go through this pretty quick. So that's one solution. Um, I think the key thing is, you know, always ground the heat sink uh, properly in your design. Okay, next slide. And then anything special like this, of course, should be on the fab drawing. Um, and it have the information, you know, properly um, depicted. And then if it's the first time you're doing this, uh, local customers can come and, and meet us at the assembly and, you know, kind of really define the process for manufacturing. That can be an advantage, uh, especially if you're doing something a little custom. Okay, next slide. So there's two uh, kind of thermal control systems, active and passive. That's what this is about. Uh, next slide. Then we have a list, uh, or at least we talk about the thermal interface materials that you can have. Um, Uh, next slide. And, you know, you can also do these types of things, uh, thermal straps and uh, heat pipes. Uh, we didn't really mention uh, another thing that you can do on PCBs is metal core or just have a thicker uh, kind of a ground plane. I just wanted to throw that in there before you get to the more exotic solutions. Okay, next slide. Yeah, so your mounting uh, interfaces can govern the thermal contact between components and facilitates the heat exchange to the structural elements uh, when necessary. And same with, um, you know, metal core PCBs, you can have them coming out of the side of the PCB and, and mount to another, something else that will remove the heat out. Uh, next slide. Okay, so we have cold plates and heaters. Uh, next slide. And then you have uh, cry coolers. Okay, and then again, we have a bunch of resources uh, for you. Uh, please check out our new tool. Um, I think we're yet to launch the tool, but uh, I think. No, it's live on the website since uh, today. Okay, do you want to share a link to everybody? Yeah. Um, Hemnandam, can you share the link? Uh, yes.
Okay, thank you very much. So if you have any questions, please uh, use the Q&A yeah. and uh, we'll get back to you. Uh, we have one question, Hemnanda. Yeah. I guess you can reply. Uh... Okay, you already did, okay. Okay, so if we don't have any more questions. Ah, one more. Yes, uh, I'm going to send you the recording and the slides tomorrow, as well as the link to the tool. So look for the thank you email. It's going to come very soon. Okay, well, thank you very much everyone for joining. And uh, we wish you a good day.